We have with us this evening Mr. K. Ram Kumar, President NHRDN India, Executive Director ICICI Bank, and President ICICI Foundation. Would request Mr. Ram Kumar to address us. Please applaud, guys. Uh, I, I really do not know whether I should speak now or simply say thank you and move on. Right? Uh, I think I'll do that right now because I don't think anybody will have any energy to really listen to anything. It's two hours have gone, it's 8 o'clock right now. Uh, I genuinely believe uh, this cannot be an occasion. Again, we cannot be futile to say that somebody in authority or somebody who is a national president who has come here to give a stage to him and he will speak. And we have to move from all those cultures doesn't help actually. Maybe there is another opportune moment where people will be ready to listen to, then I will speak. At this moment, I will simply say thank you. Thank you. Fine. Since you wanted me to get back, okay, it's, you know, I, I know you bargained for it, so I didn't, okay. Uh, my contract was uh, fun kind and this is it. Yeah. No, it's not about 8.30, I was just wondering whether this is mental energy, okay. And I also want to move away from the, see, we lost our politicians to say that the, somebody has come, so you need to really put the function around them. So I don't think, the today's evening was around the panel discussion on Anu's book actually. I think that's where we should leave it because otherwise anything we try to do it beyond and I, you know, it will be not right for the two, for the main main people who we brought in to really create. There are instead having been brought and I'll really address the, I've been speaking about it every chapter I go and I'll continue to do it and uh, some people may like what I say, some may not like what I say, but I think it is important as a president for me to address. Uh, let's just take this room at this point for time, okay? How many HR professionals will be there in Mumbai? What do you think? 50, 60,000? Right? So we need to ask the question, why did these people not find this network relevant? They voted by not being here. We ran a national conference in Delhi with 1,000 people. Right? With 80% of the people coming from Delhi. So, we have to ask this hard question within the network and ask the question to say, whose network is this? Is this meant for the office bearers who come in and a set of people who have been here for 10, 15 years? And I, the problem is not with the people who have been here for 10, 15 years. They didn't do anything wrong. Now, the question is to ask is that, why is the larger HR community not seeing this network as their network? So that's one thing we need to ask this difficult question. I've been asking in board meetings. I've been asking. I know that people end up really thinking that uh, I'm anti-national HRD network and they made a mistake than making me a president then, actually. There's nothing much you can do about it. But I genuinely believe if you have 9,000 people out of 300,000 people being part of a network with 3% market share, right? we have only one question to ask. If this doesn't go up to become anything around 50 to 60,000 in a very short time, it is better we shut this place. I say, I say it everywhere, people take it offendingly. I know people who are doings of National HRD Network end up thinking that I am irreverent and I am wrong. No, I am not. I certainly, to me being the president of National HRD Network and having it on my CV is not necessarily the most important thing in my life. Right? If in this period of National HRD Network, of what we stand and what we offer to our community is not going to attract members, right? Then actually we need to ask if there, if there was a CEO in any con any company with three percent market share for ten years, would the board have kept that CEO? Yeah. Now we need to ask the Mumbai chapter right now, with about two and a half thousand people as member for Mumbai chapter. What is the governing council in Mumbai chapter doing? This is a very good friend. I'll take the liberty to say that, right? right? What have been the previous presidents, previous secretaries, previous governing councils doing in Mumbai? So, should we not ask the question, you know, what is the drive this leadership has brought and what kind of outreach they have done to great membership into the team? So, people are telling you, oh, is membership the only way by which you look at a network? Of course, yes. Of course, yes. Members are our customers. People vote by their action. People are voted by their action by saying, you are not relevant to me. That's the message people are giving to National Academy. Yeah. 
So it is important to ask the question by saying that if 80% of the total working HR professionals are in Mumbai, Delhi, Chennai, Bangalore, Hyderabad, right? Is it such a big thing for us to really have we reached out? Why have we not? And no offense meant to the students, right? Don't get me wrong, right? We cannot fill up a room just to make people sitting on the stage be happy with a same non-diverse crowd. Where do we, we have to say that when we put a topic like diversity, we need to know, is this a diverse crowd? Diverse gathering. And I have nothing against, for all of you have come, right? I will come here, I will spend as much time, you know, Uday knows it, I will come here very often, any time you ask, I, I will interact with the students as many times as possible. When you talk as a network, you have to ask how diverse are we as a network. Yeah. So I'll put this point, it bothers me a lot. Right? At least one thing I'm certain that I will either two years later we would have this network relevant, or I would have tried hard and failed, but you would not see me and my team standing here and uh, coming and taking bouquets and going away. It's not my interest to stand and speak in a body because National Charity Network gives me a platform and I'm not going to jostle for it. And I'm not going to even jocularly say that, that I want to speak. It's insulting. A network should serve. That's what a network is for. If the network had come together to make some people prominent, that network should be killed. It cannot be, a, we will laugh at politicians. We say that, look, they are caught this together because they are promoting themselves. Who will laugh at us? And people are laughing. That's why they are not here. I have 200 people in the ICC group. How many people are here? I couldn't even convince my team to come here. Why? How many people are members? Why? If you avoid these questions, Right? What is the difference between Lalu Prasad Yadav and Ram Kumar? No difference. There's no difference. I'll spend my two years, I'll get invited hundred times, people will give me bouquet, I'll have my photographs on pamphlets, and I'll have brochures coming out, and we will self-congratulate ourselves and backslap each other and talk about us if we have achieved something in life. Zero. And it's time that we ask this question openly, and uh, this is the eight, ninth chapter. I have visited eight chapters till now. This is the ninth chapter I'm here in my first four months. So I said, well, I'm going to go there. I'm going to talk to the chapters first. I'm going to talk to the executive. I don't even know whether your full executive committee is here today. Nobody other than you and me are there from the national board here today. It's not because I have come here, they should come. Right? I don't know. Maybe every meeting they may not come. So if people are saying these meetings are not for me, for who is this meeting? Well, I'm not saying it to flatter it, right? I, I certainly think the quality of conversation we heard here is a conversation which is what this network should be putting out there. But, but if the network is putting out this quality of conversation and there are people who are saying that I don't want to be part of this conversation, so what is this network for? And we had asked this question. What is National HRD Network? What does it stand for? It's a knowledge network. It's not a social network. It's a professional network. It's not a self-promoting network. And I know of people who say that if you don't put me on the National HRD Network board, I will not work on National HRD Network till you are in the term. We have to talk about these things openly. Right? And it cannot be the signing cure for retired people. It cannot be people who I am nothing against retired people. But when retired people come back and say, I want to find relevance after 60 by doing work for National HRD Network, not because I want to serve the profession. If you have ability, you want to give it to the profession, come. I don't care whether you are 16 or whether you are 80. But you cannot say, this network becomes the basis for which I rediscover my relevance only. You can still do it because the network will offer you that space. 
But it cannot be the reason why you come here. Yeah, I know that I'm speaking to a wrong audience here. This is not the audience to whom I should be saying all this. But I would say that because it is important when you grow up. Right? When you become 30, when you become 35, when you become, somebody asked by saying that, what happens that when you speak your mind? I've spoken my mind all my life, nothing has happened to me. I'm alive. Right? I, I reach places where I am. And there are people who will sneer at you and they will not be very happy with you. And I told Uday here to say that never be accusative. My argument here is not, I'm not accusing anybody. I'm being provocative. I'm not saying so and so did it, so and so did it. That's accusative. It doesn't move anything. Accusation doesn't move anything. So we are determined, at least during this. And I don't think my presidency will define anything because, you know, when you really look at it, I always use an analogy as a sports person, right? If a captain comes and says, right, hi, pat up and go on back, you don't say, I don't know to back. You pat up and go on back. Captain throws the ball at you and says, bowl, you bowl. First stop. you may score runs, you may take wickets, you may not do that. That's what I'm doing when my profession called me and said, come take over the presidency. And Rajiv Dubey and Siddiqui called me and said that, will you do it? I said, I'll do it, but I'm cautioning you. Right? I have deep respect for the past and values and traditions, but they cannot define the future entirely. So, if you want me here, please be clear that it is not necessarily going to be only doing what has been done in the past. It's not to say I will do the right things. That's for people to judge at the end of the term. No. It's not about me, it's about 28 other people, but part of the board, it's about the chapters, and you need to know. We have 30 chapters in National HRD Network. It's a shame. Only 9 out of the 30 chapters have anybody, any membership which is more than 200 people. 21 other chapters are less than 200 people. It's not about membership, right? Who, and, and, what, and these are captured and people sit there as presidents for 7 years, 8 years, 10 years. A National HRD network main board doesn't move and want to ask the question, why can't I take the franchise out of this chapter which has been dormant or which is not working, which is self-aggrandizing for a person. We don't have the courage to say that. I heard about courage, what you said, right? We don't have the conviction to act. Yeah? So I say this more as a case study to you, right? I'm speaking to you with National HRD network and the state at which we find ourselves is a case study for you, right? And if you want to learn something about it, right, that's how I'm looking at it and speaking at this point of time. And equally to me, a leadership challenge. Because I realize right now, at ICICI, right, and when I go there, system will move because I'm somebody there. I, I have my position power there. System will move. When I come here, 28 other people are my peers and they are HR, head of HRs of this or head of HRs of that or head of HRs of something else or whatever it is. Right? They are there in the testing. So I have to know and learn to move this system and see how this moves. Jeet is a good friend, but if Jeet was not there, how why would Mumbai chapter move? For example, we finished the national conference now. Right? When we come on this panel, Sundar will talk the right things, right? All of us. Right thing. If I put five chapter presidents here, they would have said that how they stand for the institution and national HRD network. We need to ask how many presidents actually work for the national conference. Not one. Other than the Delhi chapter president. Because it happened to be his conference. And these are things which we have to engage and challenge actually. If it's a national conference, why should it be the Delhi chapter? And equally, the other side is also important, right? The Delhi chapter packed the committee with only Delhi people. And they excluded everybody else. So, why would anybody come and participate and do that? But if you put a set of national HRD network people, all of us in a room, we will talk. You cannot find a better saint than any one of us. There. Because the things we will say that would appear to be that we are the most collaborative people, we are the most diversity uh, seeking people. Dun, 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 But when the moment comes, not that. Not that. So the challenge is not only whether you are a woman or a disabled person or whether you are an LGBT. 
right? The challenge is for each one of us, whenever you stand out and say, I represent a point of view which is different to a point of view or a thinking or a thought which is the dominant thought, you get pushed back. So, look at the diversity canvas more as it is more a mindset, it is more a thought. It manifests through how our uh, outlook to certain sections of society or certain aspects of society. You know, day for yesterday I wrote an article for Founding Fuel, which is about all this talk about tolerance which is running around about whether BJP is tolerant or not. I am not an apologist for Modi or BJP. Uh, on the other hand, I will publicly say I am a critic of Modi. Right? So I have no problems of saying it publicly. Right? Of some things, what he stands for, I am not very comfortable with. At the end of it, that put aside. For everybody who comes and talks about tolerance, you have to ask the question, how much tolerance is there within the business in India? How much tolerance is there in boardrooms? I am part of boardroom. Right? It is not about gender, it is not about caste, it is not about sexuality. It is around about anybody being different to you. Anybody who chooses to articulate a point of view which is not a mainstream point of view. Now the question is what is mainstream? That is a majoritarian view. Whatever becomes majoritarian is mainstream. So it is not that if you are a Muslim, if you are a Christian, if you are a Sikh, you are a minority. There happens to be one aspect of minorities, minority aspect which happens to be that identity. But if you stand out and want to say that this aspect of an, I'm not saying an organization can be run by consensus and by polling of every employee. But do we give voice to our employees in our companies? Our own organizations? I'm guilty of it. I will stand and say that. We may, we, we may try to do it. Right? We may achieve. But that's not the mainstream one. Is it possible for an average employee, whichever level that person may be, to be able to really walk into the CEO's room and say, Hi, I disagree with your strategy. You may say it's idealism. I'm not saying it is idealism. As a 13 year old boy, I walked into my headmaster's room in Avicii High School. I was a Tamil medium boy and I told my headmaster why I did not like what was happening. I used to be a sports person at 13. I played for my sta state schools. So I did not like the way the school was uh, giving support to sports persons. So I walked into this thing to Mr. Amal Das. He happened to come to my house. He is 80 years old. He came home about three months back. And uh, I am a non-believer, right? I, I do, so because I was a non-believer, used to call me Iyengar, right? Used by my by, by my this thing to irritate me. Uh, uh, so I, I, I might say at 13, were you non-believer? As I was at 13, I was a non-believer. I didn't uh, I, uh, say so. So so I, I told him that. that man was a good man, my headmaster. And if a headmaster at that point of time has stopped me from articulating a contrary point of view, I would not have been standing here and articulating a contrary point of view today because he blessed it and said, it's okay Ram Kumar for you to come and say, yeah, at 13 years you don't know the similarity of saying something. I, I, I definitely did not say it in the most civil manner uh, to my headmaster. There's fear on one side, there's a anger on another side, you speak with that and you're confused when you do that. And you don't articulate it very well. Yeah? So, so, so the larger point I'm trying to make here is to say, I'm just wanting to bring this back to the diversity agenda. If National HRD Network or wherever you are, whatever you are to do, don't expect a supportive environment in which you will walk in there and you will be embarrassed. It is highest degree of idealism. I, t I wrote two blogs on marginalization of women, chasing it back from the history to it. Okay. To believe that it is the natural thing for society to support you, right, is not so natural. Civilization has learnt us to really subdue our competitive instincts. 10,000 years of moving into the world of civilization, we have learned not to grab. Vulgarly. Yeah, we, we grab subtly. So, if you don't stand up and you don't demand your share in the society, you will not get it. White voices will be pushed aside.
silence will not be met with voluntarism by any walk of society. Got to be able to stand up, yeah, and uh, got to really, uh, yeah, but I would say when you articulate your piece, don't articulate in a manner in which it makes everybody in a society a person who is guilty. The moment you pronounce everybody around you as a guilty person, why would that person want to support you? He would want to dig in or he would fight. So what, I, I was a very early student union activist, I'm a communist party of Marxist India, card holding member as a young boy, right, for a long period I was a very strong member of the party, right, and uh, uh, so, so, so what, what, we, what I learned from those periods is to say, you keep accusing everybody in the society to say, you are this, you are that, you are not helpful, you are useless, the government is useless, people are useless, everybody around me is useless, then why would people support you? So one of the mistakes what we as activists end up doing when we wear the activist cap, nothing wrong about being an activist, is we lose support by accusing everybody around us as irresponsible people. So they won't join you there. The moment you call names at somebody, why would that person want to stand? So my argument is not that when you demand space, you call people names. My argument is to say that, can you move the needle? That's leadership. Can you get a person to engage you into a conversation, however different that person's point of view or his experience up to this point of time may be? It's not so easy. It was easy, it all would have been achieved by now. Because, it, and do you have the enormous mental, physical energy to relentlessly go after it, shamelessly, day after day when you get pushed back? You get pushed back. Don't expect that uh, people would say, oh, so one of the mistakes when we are young, we end up thinking is that we put up a hand and we want to say something. Uh, people will notice your hand and ask you to stand up and say what you want to say. No, if there are 10 hands which are there, and not only your hand, the hand which is most prominent is the one which is going to attract the attention of the person and that's the person who is going to be met. You can cry and say, oh, what is it? I am also as good as the other, uh, that, that person who called up, but you are in trouble. But I am not saying you 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 will have to cut that hand so that your hand will appear prominent. Yeah? If the tenth hand insists to say, until my hand goes down, Right? Because you gave me an opportunity to speak, right? That hand will be get prominence. But if you weakly pull your hand down, at the end of the third or the fourth, thinking you are in the queue, your turn will never come. You will always keep putting it down and you will never get your chance. Well, I, I, I've been a very strong caste activist. Born a Brahmin, disowned. I'm not a Brahmin anymore. I'm not a Hindu. I say, I, I don't care. I'm not. Right? I carry only one my nationality. Even that, I don't like too much of hyper patriotism going around and walking around and saying, Bhakta Hanuman, I am Indian. Right? Right? Uh, don't you see India in my heart nonsense? Right? Uh, we don't have to do that. To do that. But, but, but that having said, yeah, but that having said, right, I realize as, as, as a young student activist, as a young college activist, I realize that the only way you can move the needle is keep challenging, but don't accuse. But you gotta find that knack of engaging people, getting people to debate. That's a knack. Not people walking away from you. You gotta put that hook there so that there is something in the person who opposes what you stand for to feel compelled to engage you and state this argument. The moment that other person states the argument to say, this is why I don't like your point of view, you got the game moving. And that will come powerfully, intensely, with a great push. Now you got to hold your ground to say, aha, uh -huh, you started speaking. Let's go, the next round, the next round, you will be surprised, both of you will change. You will change as the conversation goes, the other person changes as the conversation goes. But if you say that in this activism of mine, only the other person will change, I will not change, right? You are not going to go too far because the other person will shut up at a certain point of a time and not continue the conversation. 
And it does not matter whether it is this is boardroom or whether it is a public rally. I, I, I have stood up on a parapet wall with a megaphone in the hand and addressed 5,000, 8,000 people. During 1982, uh, when we were really rallying people, uh, when there was a program against Tamils in Sri Lanka, right? Uh, you'll have 10 people standing first. You don't want to have 5,000 people coming in there. But if you say, no, I will speak only when there are 5,000 people and there are not 10 people, you will never get that 5,000 people up there. 10 will become 20, 20 will become 200, 200 will become 2,000, then it will rain. You can't stop it. Then people are ready to take lati charges. People are really ready to walk into tear gas shells. You'll be surprised. People like you and me will walk into tear gas shells. But you've got to be patient. It won't happen tomorrow morning. Yeah? That's precisely where I am out with National Study Network. <laughs> yeah? 30th of June, 2017, when I lay down my office, I would have coughed up as much of lucky charges, as much of bullets, and as much of tear gas shells. And we will make this network relevant for the HR profession. Need your support. And don't think you're a student, you cannot help us. You can join the network today. Yeah, it costs a fraction of the fee you pay for your B-School. And we promise you, I personally will stand and be responsible for you, that we will give you value. We will give you value. It's a promise. Hold us responsible. Hold me responsible for it. Yeah. One other point. Every one of you become a member. Right? Ask one more person to become a member. Right? And tell that person, when she becomes a member, to make one more person a member. Will you? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Thank you very much.